Singaporean Mandarin, simplified Chinese, Xin Jia Po Hua Yu, traditional Chinese, Xin Jia Po Hua Yu, Pinyin, Xin Jia Po Hua Yu, is a variety of Mandarin Chinese widely spoken in Singapore. It is one of the four official languages of Singapore along with English, Malay and Tamil. Singaporean Mandarin can be classified into two distinct Mandarin dialects, Standard Singaporean Mandarin and Colloquial Singaporean Mandarin. These two dialects are easily distinguishable to a person proficient in Mandarin. Standard Singaporean Mandarin is the register of Mandarin used in more formal occasions in Singapore and can be heard on television and radio. It is also the form taught in all Singapore government schools, while colloquial Singaporean Mandarin is the form used by the general populace. They tend to infuse the language with many words from other Chinese dialects, Malay and English. Singaporean Mandarin only became widely spoken by the Chinese community in Singapore after the Speak Mandarin campaign in 1979. It is today considered to be the second most commonly spoken language in Singapore, after English. Due to its widespread usage, Singaporean Mandarin has replaced Singaporean Hokkien as the lingua franca of the Chinese community in Singapore today. Following the economic rise of China in the 21st century, Mandarin proficiency has been viewed with greater importance and has risen in terms of prominence in Singapore. In 2010, there was an increase in the number of Singaporean population who know two or more languages, with increasing influx of mainland Chinese from mainland China to Singapore recently. Singaporean Mandarin has gradually inclined itself towards Patongwa. Currently, Singaporean Mandarin continues to develop itself with major influences coming from Patongwa, Taiwanese Mandarin and English. Overview Standard Singaporean Mandarin The official standard of Mandarin of Republic of Singapore, known in Singapore as Waya, Wayu is based on the phonology of the Beijing dialect and the grammar of vernacular Chinese, is almost identical to the standard of Mandarin used in the People's Republic of China, known there as Patongwa Pu Tong Hua, and the Republic of China, Taiwan, known there as Guoyu Guoyu. Standard Singaporean Mandarin, which is usually heard on Singaporean Mandarin language TV and radio news broadcast, is generally similar to Guoyu in terms of phonology, and Patongwa in terms of vocabulary and grammar. Small differences only appear in the form of lexicon. Colloquial Singaporean Mandarin in terms of colloquial spoken Mandarin, Singaporean Mandarin is subjected to influence from the local historical, cultural and social influences of Singapore. As such, there are remarkable differences between colloquial Singaporean Mandarin and Patongwa. Owing to a common culture and history between the Chinese Singaporeans and Malaysian Chinese, colloquial Singaporean Mandarin bears the closest resemblance with colloquial Malaysian Mandarin. Features of Singaporean Mandarin Singaporean Mandarin had preserved the vocabulary and certain features of the classical Chinese and early vernacular Chinese Baihua, of the early 20th century. Because Singapore's Chinese schools adopted Chinese teaching materials from Republic of China in the early 20th century, Singapore's early Mandarin pronunciations was based on the Zuyin in the Dictionary of National Pronunciation, Guo Yin Zidian Guo Yin Zidian and vocabulary of national pronunciation for everyday use. Guo Yin Chang Yang Zi. As such, it had preserved the older forms of pronunciations. In addition, during its initial development, Singaporean Mandarin was also influenced by Chinese dialects of Singapore such as Hokkien, Teochew, Cantonese, etc. From 1949 to 1979, due to lack of contact between Singapore and people's Republic of China, Patongwa did not exert any form of influence on Singaporean Mandarin. On the contrary, the majority of Mandarin Chinese entertainment media, Chinese literature, books and reading materials in Singapore came mainly from Taiwan. Consequently, Singaporean Mandarin has been influenced by Taiwanese Mandarin to a certain degree. After the 1980s, along with China's open-door policy, there was increasing contact between Singapore and mainland China, thus increasing Patongwa's gradual influence on Singaporean Mandarin. These influences included the adoption of pinyin and the shift from usage of traditional Chinese characters to simplified Chinese characters. 
Much of the lexicon from Patongwa had also found its way into Singaporean Mandarin. History Background Historical sources indicated that before 1819 when Sir Stamford Raffles came to Singapore, there were already Chinese settlers in Singapore. After 1819 when Sir Stamford Raffles set foot on Singapore, many Peranakan from Malaysian and European merchants began to come to Singapore. Because they required large number of laborers, coolies were brought in from China to Singapore. Large number of Chinese laborers came to Singapore after the Opium War. Chinese settlers who came to Singapore from China during the 19th and second half of the 20th century were known as Singka. Shin K. Amongst them were many contract laborers, including those who worked at the docks. Most of them came to Singapore to escape from poverty and to search for a better life, while others came to Singapore to escape from wars taking place in China during the first half of the 20th century. Most of them came from southern Chinese provinces such as Fujian, Guangdong and Hainan. Amongst these Singka, there were many Hoklo, Hokkien, Teochew, Cantonese and Hainanese. They brought their own different native Chinese varieties to Singapore, including Hokkien, Teochew, Cantonese, Hakka and Hainanese. Because these varieties were mutually unintelligible, Chinese clans association were established based on their own ancestral home and dialect groups to help take care of their own people who speak the same dialect. The use of Mandarin to serve as a lingua franca amongst the Chinese only began with the founding of Republic of China, which established Mandarin as the official tongue. Development of Mandarin in Singapore Before the 20th century, old-style private Chinese school known as Sishu, Sishu in Singapore generally used Chinese dialects such as Hokkien, Teochew, Cantonese, etc. as their medium of instruction to teach the Chinese classics and classical Chinese. Singapore S. First Mandarin medium classes appeared around 1898, but Chinese dialect school continued to exist till 1909. After the May Fourth Movement in 1919, under the influence from the New Culture Movement in China, the local old style private Chinese school in Singapore began to follow the new education reform as advocated by China. S. Reformist. Thus, the language of medium in school changed from other Chinese dialects to Mandarin Chinese or Guoyu. Guo. This marked the beginning of the development of Singaporean Mandarin. However, at that time, there was no colloquial standard Mandarin which could be used as a basis for learning Mandarin. In addition, during the early 1900s, most Mandarin teachers in Singapore came from southern parts of China, and had strong southern Chinese accents. Thus, the pronunciations in Singaporean Mandarin were under heavy influence from China's southern Chinese dialects, for instance, there were no Erhua, Er Hua light tone, Ching Sheng and no sentences had the heavy or light accent, Ching Zhang Yin etc. In 1919, a group of scholars in China published the Dictionary of National Pronunciation. This was one of the earliest dictionaries on modern Mandarin based on the Beijing dialect of Mandarin. However, the dictionary was a mix of northern Chinese sounds and southern Chinese rhymes, which included a fifth tone, the Czech tone, Ru Sheng or Ru Sheng. It wasn. T until 1932 that a dictionary called the Vocabulary of National Pronunciation for Everyday Use, which was based truly on the Beijing dialect, was published. This dictionary standardized the form of Mandarin taught in Singapore. S. Chinese schools. During the 1930s and 1940s, new immigrants from China, known as Xin K, Xin K helped to establish more Chinese schools in Singapore, increasing the propagation of Mandarin Chinese in Singapore. The name of Mandarin in Singapore was eventually changed from Guoyu, Guoyu i.e. national language, to Waya, Waiyu i.e. Chinese language. From the 1950s till 1970, as most of the Chinese books and literature came from Taiwan or Hong Kong, Singaporean Mandarin was subjected to influence from Taiwanese Mandarin. After the 1980s, due to the open-door policy of mainland China, Singapore began to have greater contact with mainland China. Consequently, Singapore began to adopt Hanyu Pinyin and changed its writing system from traditional Chinese characters to simplified Chinese characters. 
After the Speak Mandarin campaign in 1979, the Promote Mandarin Council started research on Mandarin standardization based on case studies in mainland China and Taiwan. After the 1990s, due to greater contacts between Singapore and mainland China, there was a large influx of new Chinese migrants from mainland China. Consequently, much of the lexicon of Patonghua found its way into Singaporean Mandarin. Today's Singaporean Mandarin continues to be influenced from Patonghua, as well as Taiwanese Mandarin and Hong Kong's Cantonese. Differences from Standard Mandarin Lexicon, Vocabulary Major differences between Singaporean Mandarin Waya Yu, and Patongwa lie in the vocabulary used. A lack of contact between Singapore and China from 1949 to 1979 meant that Singaporean Mandarin had to invent its own new words to suit the local Singapore environment, as well as borrow certain words from Taiwanese Mandarin or some other Chinese dialects that were spoken in Singapore. As a result, new Mandarin words proprietary to Singapore were invented. The Dictionary of Contemporary Singaporean Mandarin Vocabulary, Shi Dai Shin Jia Po Te Yu Si Yu Si Dian, edited by Wang Hawiti, Wang Wei Di, listed 1560 uniquely local Singaporean Mandarin words, which are not used in mainland China or Taiwan. Unique Singaporean Mandarin words There are many new terms that are specific to living in Singapore, though some also apply in neighboring Malaysia. These words were either translated from Malay and Chinese dialects, or invented, as there were no equivalent words in Patongwa. Some of the words are taken from the Hokkien translation of Malay words. Words translated from Malay into Hokkien include kampung, pasar, basha English, market. This explains the uniquely Singapore Mandarin words. Same meaning, different words. There are some words used in Singaporean Mandarin that have the same meaning with other words used in Patongwa or Taiwanese Mandarin. Same word, different meanings. There are certain similar words used in both Singaporean Mandarin and Patongwa, but have different meanings and usage. Loan words and influence from other Chinese dialects. There is quite a number of specific words used in Singaporean Mandarin that originate from other Chinese dialects such as Hokkien, Teochew, Cantonese etc. These dialects have also influenced the pronunciation in Singaporean Mandarin. Loan words and English influences There is quite a number of specific words used in Singaporean Mandarin that originate or are transliterated from English. These words appear in written Singaporean Mandarin. Grammar In terms of standard written Mandarin in Singapore, the Singaporean Mandarin grammar is almost similar to that of Patongwa. However, the grammar of colloquial Singaporean Mandarin can differ from that of Patongwa as a result of influence from other varieties of Chinese, classical Chinese and English. Some of the local Singaporean Mandarin writings do exhibit certain local Singaporean features. Time When speaking of minutes, colloquial Singaporean Mandarin typically uses the word Z, Z which represents a unit of five minutes. When referring to a number of hours, duration, Zhang Tu Zhang Tu, is used instead of Shao Shi, Shao Shi. For instance, 5 minutes, yi gei z yi gei z. 10 minutes, liang gei z liang gei z. 15 minutes, san gei z san gei z. 45 minutes, ju gei z ju gei z. 1 hour, yi gei zhang tu yi gei zhang tu. The use of z z originates from Hokkien, ji or li, Cantonese or classical Chinese. Its origin came from the ancient Chinese units of measuring time. In ancient Chinese time measurement, hours were measured in terms of shichen, shi shen equivalent to 2 hours while minutes were measured in terms of k, k equivalent to 15 minutes. Each k was in turn divided into 3 z, equivalent to 5 minutes. For instance, 7.45 p.m. is 
chi chi, dian dian, ju ju, gay gay, z z, or chi chi, dian dian, ju ju, Singaporean Mandarin. Chi chi, dian dian, si 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 si, wu wu, fen fen, standard Mandarin. Days of the week. As a result of Hokkien influence, colloquial Singaporean Mandarin typically uses the word bai, bai to refer to the days of the week, in lieu of standard Mandarin. Xing -chi. Xing -chi. For instance, Monday, bai yi bai yi, instead of xing chi yi, xing chi yi. Sunday, li bai tian libation, or simply li bai, li bai instead of xing chi ri, xing -chi -ri. A week, yi ge li bai, yi ge li bai, instead of the more formal yi ge xing chi, yi ge xing qi, both bai, bai, and li bai, li bai, originate from Hokkien pi and lei pi respectively. Large numbers In colloquial Singaporean Mandarin, wan wan, referring to 10,000, is often used but xi qian, xi qian, referring to 10,000s is occasionally used too. This usage was influenced by English numbering system. The use of the word air er yi air er yi air er is more common in colloquial Singaporean Mandarin than in standard Mandarin, which uses ball at bail. The same is true for Taiwanese Mandarin. While air er yi air er is also used in colloquial Mandarin within mainland China, but perhaps to a lesser extent as compared to Singapore or Taiwan. For example, translation, only like this, only this kind. JJ, Yang Zi Yangsi, Air Yi Airi, a Singaporean Mandarin. JJ, Yang Zi Yangsi, Bala Bale, Standard Mandarin. The use of the word Da Ji, Shao Ji. When people describe the size of animals, for example, chicken, these are used to mean small, large. Patongwa tends to use phi, show, instead. These two words are also used to describe the size, your body frame. Da ji refers to people who appear to be tall, masculine or a large body build. Shao ji is used to describe people with a small built tiny frame. Use of the word a as an affirmative. In colloquial Singaporean Mandarin, the word a is often used in response to a sentence as an affirmative. It is often pronounced as a with a nasal tone instead of a or a in Patongwa. Patongwa tends to use she de duia dui ya. She de duia dui ya. O. 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 N. N per nanogram to mean. Yes, it is. Use of the word. Kai. Instead of. Zai. In Singaporean Mandarin, there is a greater tendency to use the word kai. Kai. Then, in lieu of standard Mandarin zai. Zai. Then, which indicates a future action after the completion of a prior action. For instance, Guan Shui Shen Bao Dan Gang Chao Yang Wan La Da Suan Zai Fei Ji Shang Ling La Kai Tian Xie. The tax declaration forms have all been used up, we'll have to get a form on the plane then and fill it out. Xian Zai Bu Yao Shuo Deng Ta Kai Bao La Kai Shuo. Don't say anything now, say it only after he has finished his meal. The use of the word you. In standard Mandarin, one typical way of turning certain nouns into adjectives, such as xing ku, shinka, interest, ying yang, ying yang, nutrition, li mao la mao, politeness, is to prefix the word you, you, at the front of these nouns. For example, hen yu xing ku. Hen Yu Shinka very interested. Hen Yu Ying Yang. Hen Yu Ying Yang, very nutritious. Hen Yu Li Mao. 
Hen Yu Lamao, very polite, the word Yu, Yu, is sometimes omitted in writing. Reduplication of verbs preceding Yi Sha In Singaporean Mandarin, verbs preceding Yi Sha may be reduplicated, unlike in Patongwa. In Patongwa grammar, the use of the word Yi Sha Air Yixia R is often put at the back of a verb to indicate that the action, as indicated by the verb, is momentary. For example, Shang Shang, Shang Shang, Yi Sha Yixia, Singaporean Mandarin. Shang Shang, Yi Sha Air Yixia R, Standard Mandarin. Think for a while, Yanju Yanju, Yanju Yanju, Yi Sha Yixia, Singaporean Mandarin. Yanju Yanju, Yi Sha Air Yixia R, Standard Mandarin. Research for a little while. Colloquial use of the word. Bay. Singaporean colloquial Mandarin tends to use bay, bay more commonly than Patongwa, mainly due to influence from English. Compare the following. The road has been repaired. Ma Lu Ma Lu, Bay Bei, Shu Hao Zia Hao, Lila, Singaporean Mandarin. Ma Lu Ma Lu, Yi Yi, Shu Hao Zia Hao, Lila, Patongwa. Using adjective as verb. Sometimes, colloquial Singaporean Mandarin might use intransitive verbs as transitive. For instance, Jin Bu improve is an intransitive verb, but is influenced by the use of English. I want to improve my Chinese is sometimes said in Singaporean Mandarin as Wo Yao Jin Bu Wo De Wa Yu. The standard Mandarin should be Wo Yao Rang Wo De Wa Yu Jin Bu. Phonology and tones The phonology and tones of Singaporean Mandarin are generally similar to that of standard Mandarin. There are four tones similar to those in standard Mandarin, but are hua, or finals, and the neutral tone, ching sheng lit, light tone, are generally absent in Singaporean Mandarin. The earliest development of Singaporean Mandarin includes the Old Beijing phonology, Lao Guo Yin followed by New Beijing phonology, Xin Guo Yin and then finally Hanyu Pinyin of mainland China. In its initial development, Singaporean Mandarin was highly influenced by the Ru Sheng Ru Sheng check tones or fifth tones from other Chinese varieties. As such, the fifth tone did appear in earlier Singaporean Mandarin. The characteristics of the fifth tone are as follows. It is a falling tone. The common tone letter is 51, but sometimes it is 53. The tone does not last long. It feels more like an interrupted stop. The syllable which carries the tone had a glottal stop. Sometimes the final sounds to be clear, but sometimes, it does not sound very clear. This glottal stop not only interrupts the lasting period of the tone, but also makes the start of consonant stronger, thus nearing itself more to a voiced consonant. However, due to years of development, prevalence of the fifth tone in Singaporean Mandarin is declining. This means that the Singaporean Mandarin had inclined itself towards standard Chinese. Minor differences occur between the phonology tones of standard Singaporean Mandarin and other forms of standard Mandarin. Influences from other languages in Singapore Just like any languages in Singapore, Singaporean Mandarin is subjected to influences from other languages spoken in Singapore. Singaporean Hokkien is the largest non-Mandarin Chinese variety spoken in Singapore. The natural tendency of Hokkien speakers to use the Hokkien way to speak Mandarin has influenced to a large degree the colloquial Mandarin spoken in Singapore. The colloquial Hokkien style Singaporean Mandarin is commonly heard in Singapore, and can differ from Patongwa in terms of vocabulary, phonology and grammar. Besides Singaporean Hokkien, Mandarin is also subjected to influence coming from other dialects such as Teochew, Cantonese, Hakka, and Hainanese, as well as English. Writing system 
In Singapore, simplified Chinese characters are the official standard used in all official publications as well as the government-controlled press. While simplified Chinese characters are taught exclusively in schools, the government does not officially discourage the use of traditional characters. Therefore, many shop signs continue to be written in traditional characters. Menus in hawker centers and coffee shops are also usually written in simplified characters. As there is no restriction on the use of traditional characters in the mass media, television programs, books, magazines and music CDs that have been imported from Hong Kong or Taiwan are widely available, and these almost always use traditional characters. Most karaoke discs, being imported from Hong Kong or Taiwan, have song lyrics in traditional characters as well. While all official publications are in simplified characters, the government still allows parents to choose whether to have their child's Chinese name registered in simplified or traditional characters though most choose the former. Singapore had undergone three successive rounds of character simplification, eventually arriving at the same set of simplified characters as mainland China. Before 1969, Singapore generally used traditional characters. From 1969 to 1976, the Ministry of Education launched its own version of simplified characters, which differed from that of mainland China. But after 1976, Singapore fully adopted the simplified characters of mainland China. Chinese writing style and literature Chinese writing style before the May Fourth Movement in 1919, Singapore Chinese writings were based on classical Chinese. After the May Fourth Movement, under the influence from the New Culture Movement in China, the Chinese schools in Singapore began to follow the new education reform as advocated by China's reformist and changed the writing style to vernacular Chinese. Singapore's Chinese newspaper had witnessed this change from classical Chinese to vernacular Chinese. Lot Pao, Le Bao, one of the earliest Chinese newspaper, was still using classical Chinese in 1890. By 1917, it continued to use classical Chinese. But by 1925, it had changed to vernacular Chinese. After this, all Chinese newspaper in Singapore used vernacular Chinese. Singaporean Chinese Literature Singaporean Chinese literature was once part of Malaysia Chinese literature. It originated from the New Culture Movement in China. In 1965, Singapore was expelled from Malaysia. Since then, Singaporean Chinese literature started to develop independently. The development of the Singaporean Chinese literature reflected the history of immigrants in Singapore. When many Chinese writers from southern China arrived in Singapore, they established Chinese schools, newspaper press etc. They contributed a lot to the development of Chinese literature in Singapore. In 1919, the new national magazine Xin Guo Min Zha Ji marked the birth of Malaysia Chinese literature. In those days, the migrants' mindset was still deeply entrenched. Many of the literary works were influenced by new culture movement. Most of the literary works that were published originated from the works of writers in China. In 1925, the presence of literary supplements such as Southern Wind, Nan Feng, Light of Singapore Xingguang, brought a new dimension to Malaysia Chinese literature. They differed from past magazine that relied on writers from China. It was at this time, that the thoughts of Nanyang began to surface the corner. In January 1927, the Deserted Island, Huang Dao published in the New National Press. Xin Guo Min Ribao clearly reflected the features of Nanyang in its literary work. The localization literary works mostly described the lifestyle in Nanyang, the people and their feelings in the Yang. The quality of Singaporean Chinese literature had greatly improved. In 1937, the outbreak of Second Sino-Japanese War raised the anti-Japanese sentiment. The literature during these times reflected the missions of national salvation against the Japanese. This brought a halt to the localization movement and in turn re-enacted a sense of Chinese nationalism amongst the migrants in Singapore. From 1941 till 1945, during the Japanese occupation of Singapore, the activities for Malaysia Chinese literature was halted. 
After the war, people in Singapore began to have a sense of belonging to this piece of land, and they also had a desire for freedom and democracy. During this times, Malaysia Chinese literature was inclined towards anti-colonialism. With new arts and thoughts, between 1947-1948, there was a debate between unique Malaysian literary art and literary thoughts of migrants. The results from these debated led to a conclusion that the Malaysia Chinese literature was going to develop on its own independently. The localization clearly marked the mature development of Malaysia Chinese literature. During the 1950s, writers from Malaysia and Singapore drew their literary works mostly from the local lifestyle and events that reflected the lifestyle from all areas of the society. They also included many Chinese dialect proverbs in their works. They created unique works of literature. Writers including Miao Shu, Miao Shu Yao Ji, Yao Zi Zhao Rong, Zhao Rong Shu Shu, Shu Shu etc. represented the writers of localization works. On 9 August 1965, Singapore became independent. Malaysia Chinese literature was now divided into Malaysian Chinese literature and Singaporean Chinese literature. From 1960 to 1970, the number of literary works published began to increase. Locally born and locally bred Singaporean writers became the new writers in the stage of Singaporean Chinese literature. Their works were mainly based on the views of Singaporeans towards issues or context happening in Singapore. They continued the localization movement and brought the Singaporean Chinese literature to a new dimension. Arts and entertainment Music After the Speak Mandarin campaign in 1979, all Chinese TV programs using other Chinese varieties were replaced by Mandarin programs. Singapore also started to broadcast Mandopop. The birth of Xinyao during the 1980s injected a new life to the creation of lyrics for Mandopop in Singapore. Singapore radios also began to have Singapore billboards Shin ja po Long Hu Bang for Mandopop. This allowed Singapore to be developed into a major center for Mandopop in Southeast Asia. There were also many Mandopop artists coming from Singapore such as Stephanie Sun, J.J. Lin, Tanya Chua, etc. Opera Movies TV drama serial News At the moment, there are two television channels with news bulletin programs in Chinese. Sociolinguistics Politics Language plays an important role in Singapore politics. Up to today, it is still important for politicians in Singapore to be able to speak their mother tongue and even other dialects fluently in order to reach out to the multilingual community in Singapore. According to observation, if an election candidate is able to speak fluent Mandarin, his chance of winning an election is higher during the election campaign. As such, most election candidates will try to use Mandarin in campaign speeches in order to attract Mandarin-speaking voters. Singaporean Mandarin Standard Some Chinese elites in Singapore had criticized that the Mandarin standard of Chinese Singaporean has dropped greatly due to the closure or subsequent conversion of Chinese medium schools to English medium schools in the 1980s. Others attributed the drop in standard to the lack of learning Chinese literature in schools. Ever since 1965 when Singapore became independent, bilingual policy has become the pillar of Singapore's education. The first language of Singapore was English, while Mandarin was chosen as the mother tongue of Chinese Singaporean. Generally, most Chinese Singaporean can speak Mandarin fluently, but are usually weaker in writing Chinese. Influence of mainland China's economic rise on Singapore in recent years, with the subsequent economic rise of mainland China and a transition from a world factory to a world market, Mandarin has become the second most influential language after English. 
Besides transmitting Chinese culture values, many people began to realize the economic values of Mandarin, which has raised the interests of local and working professionals in learning Mandarin. Changes in mother tongue and dialect preservation the original mother tongue of Chinese Singaporeans other Chinese varieties, such as Hokkien, Teochew or Cantonese. This was certainly true when southern Chinese migrants came to Singapore. However, with the Speak Mandarin campaign, the Chinese Singaporeans' home language experienced a change from these other varieties to Mandarin, and later from Mandarin to English. Mandarin was designated as the mother tongue of Chinese Singaporean in Singapore. In recent years, there has been an increasing awareness of dialect preservation, due to the great decline in the use of other Chinese dialects in Singapore. Most young Chinese Singaporeans were unable to speak these Chinese dialects effectively and were thus unable to communicate with their grandparents, who are more used to speaking these dialects. This has caused a generation gap. As such, there is a minority of Singaporeans working to help preserve or spread these Chinese dialects in Singapore. Language, policy and culture Under the bilingual policy of Singapore, Chinese Singaporeans had a greater chance to speak and use English especially in school and at work. But this can cause a relative limitation in the use of mother tongue. Generally speaking, most Chinese Singaporeans are able to speak Mandarin, and also read newspapers in it, but only a minority is able to use it at a professional level such as academic research, literary writing etc. In the endeavor to use English, some Chinese Singaporeans even distanced themselves from the mother tongue culture, resulting in the erosion of Chinese culture in Singapore. See also Standard Singaporean Mandarin Singdarin Singapore Chinese characters Speak Mandarin campaign Chinese in Singapore Languages of Singapore Comparison of national standards of Chinese Standard Mandarin Taiwanese Mandarin Philippine Mandarin Malaysian Mandarin References Notes Chinese books. Zhou Ching Hai Bian J. Xin Jia Po Wa Yu Si Wei Yu Yu Fa Xin Jia Po Ling Zi Chuan Ma Yi Si Ren Yu Xian Gong Si Chu Ban September 2002 ISBN 9814127236 X ISBN 9789814127233 Zhou King Hai 2002 Vocabulary and Grammar of Singaporean Mandarin Lingzi Media. Zhou Ching Hai J B N Dong Zhang De Yu Yan Xin Jia Po Ling Zi Chuan Mo E C Ren Yu Xian Gong Si Chu Ban 2009 ISBN 9814243922 ISBN 9789814243922 Chen Hai J 2009 The Changing Languages Lingzi Media Bibliography in Chinese